Hey guys, Terry Hay here from Shock Treatment. We're going to be doing a few videos on the uh, latest WP forks. The European bikes have become very, very popular with KTM, Husqvarna and now Gas Gas. And all of these bikes are being adorned with WP suspension. Now, it hasn't exactly been the biggest hit with uh, a lot of the riders and we're finding that a lot of people are actually swapping their suspension out and buying expensive aftermarket forks and shocks. Uh, or they're going to very radical steps to uh, make their bikes handle better. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the design of each of these forks and at the moment I've got an old Husky and an old uh, KTM in here and both of these are adorned with the 4CS forks. Now the 4CS was a much maligned fork, it uh, is no longer being produced but um, it had a whole lot of problems and uh, basically a lot of people couldn't really come to grips with them. And this probably started the, the, the quest for aftermarket suspension. And, um, but there are some simple solutions and what we're going to be talking about are the most elegant solutions as well as the most economical ones. So we're going to pull these forks down, have a look at them. Uh, what was unique about this fork when it came out was it uh, had one leg compression, one leg rebound, which made it very easy to tune. You didn't have to get off the bike, you could just do it even while you're riding if you had the balance. But um, uh, this separation of the adjustment created its own issues internally, but um, externally uh, we found a lot of these um, adjusted knobs used to fracture, so um, gave rise to an aftermarket supply of uh, adjusting knobs as well. But we'll have a look at how we can sort that out, and um, there are some companies that come up with a complete solution for these forks, so we'll get into that. Okay, so we've taken the cartridge out of the fork tubes. Obviously, we don't need to see the fork tubes. They're pretty standard amongst motorcycles. But uh, here's our four-chamber fork, or 4CS four stands for four-chamber. So uh, that was uh, something unique in its time. And so we had a lot of seals in this cartridge. And basically, uh, it's the seals that separate the chambers and give us the four-chamber setup. Now, what's different with this one is the the top of the cartridge is actually sealed against the inside of the chrome tube. So that makes one chamber above the, uh, the spring seat. We have an internal seal that uh, separates the, um, the top chamber from the lower chamber here where all the damping is created. Uh, at the moment I've got the, the base valve out of the fork that would normally screw in. There's your compression valve here. But this outer chamber is considered another chamber. We have the pressure chamber here as well. And so, uh, beyond that, some people will say, no, no, that's not one of the chambers. We have a chamber above the rebound piston and a chamber below the piston. Who cares, you know? But uh, anyway, let's pull this apart. We'll have a good look at it. We'll take the spring guide off. Our damper rod comes out. Now, if you've seen, if you've seen compression valves before, this will look a little unusual. Uh, we don't normally see that on base valves. But... What it is, it's part of the, um, the bottom out mechanism. Now, instead of having an external bottom out chamber, uh, they, they made the bottom out chamber internal. And basically, as the forks compresses, it gets right down in the stroke. That piston will enter that cone and uh, bring the fork to a rapid halt, thereby resisting bottoming. Now, um, inside this, we have a directional needle. And as I said before, one leg is rebound, one leg is compression. The, when you pull these apart, Pretty easy to see which one's the rebound. It's got the uh, the red piston on the end of the damper rod. And uh, inside there we have a, a little directional needle. It'll be oriented differently whether it's rebound or compression. Unfortunately, whilst this creates uh, the ability to have one leg rebound, one leg compression, it also does hamper with our suspension performance and we're best without those in there. Now, looking at the system itself, the damper rod is a very, very small damper rod. It's only eight millimeters in diameter. Normal forks are running 12 or 12 and a half millimeters uh, damper rods. And so it is the damper rod entering the system that it basically displaces an equivalent volume of oil. And that volume of oil gets pushed through that base valve. Now, that rod volume is very, very small. So we only have a small amount uh, from an 8mm rod going through a 28mm piston or 29mm and um, 
basically that small amount of fluid once it opens that valve because it opens over such a large area the fluid could just just burst through and uh, stroke control became very very difficult with this fork now uh, being a pressurized system any of the pressurized systems doesn't matter what it's show or Kayaba the old uh, bladder fork from WP they needed a way to regulate pressure buildup in the 4CS fork they've used a fairly crude system I'm not real happy with it um, basically the seal at the top of the cartridge here what they've done is they've put a groove in this damper rod now that groove is actually quite sharp and so uh, with that little groove that we've got there, if you can see it on that rod, basically uh, that groove will come in and it will bridge the seal and it will allow any pressure to basically equalise from one side of the seal to the other. Very simple, somewhat effective. Unfortunately, the edge of this is quite, uh, quite sharp and too sharp to be running through a seal. And so basically it would take that seal out. And you know that you could put a new seal in there. It might last a few weeks, might last a few months, but eventually it will fail just because of the balance mechanism. We had a lot of time, uh, a lot of trouble with um, one particular customer called Richard in our in our first instance because we weren't aware that that uh, seal was being taken out all the time. It'd constantly come back going. My forks are harsh in their bottoming, even though we set them up and uh, they felt good once we'd done the work. And it was later on we, we discovered what the issue was with that. And so that was probably the worst thing about this particular design was that balance mechanism, apart from the fluid displacements. Now, if, uh, if we're going to look at solving some of the problems with this fork, the best solution that we come up with is to get rid of the pressurisation in this fork and convert it to what we call an open chamber fork. Now, the seal, as we know, it's a fail point, so we, if we pop that seal out, uh, we can find that, that we won't have any problems with any changing of the, uh, the pressure. And also by taking that O-ring off, we actually allow oil to flow between the chambers. And so once we've done that, we've got complete durability with this fork and we've got um, a complete continuity. We'll have a uniform performance all the time. Okay, there, are, there might be a few people who are concerned about getting rid of the, uh, the sealing mechanism at the top of this cartridge, but it, uh, it pays to keep in mind that, that this is something superfluous to our needs. Now, normal cartridges don't actually have a seal there unless you're talking about a twin chamber setup. And, um, and this cartridge, without that seal in it, just becomes a normal open chamber fork. So the fork performance goes back to basically what they had prior to this fork uh, but that fork was um, a very good unit and uh, you know sometimes we need to go back in order to go forward so okay so we've seen how this works or how it doesn't work and uh, now what we want to do is set about making some changes so that we can get much better suspension performance as we said get rid of the o-ring that's on the top there you can simply take a seal pick and you can pull that seal pick out of the top of the cartridge. Very, very simple transition. And um, uh, with our damper rod, what we want to do is we want to uh, get the little needles out of these uh, housings so we can pull that, that bottom out cone off the end of the rod, get rid of the needle, we'll just toss that aside. And uh, for our base valves, Racetech actually make a, uh, a fully adjustable compression assembly and you can install these in the bottom of the forks they're not very expensive they're a couple of hundred dollars and uh, really give the ability to upgrade this fork now all we're going to do is we're going to swap out all the hardware from here put it onto uh, to that assembly they've got everything there so that matches up perfectly and uh, and then we want to revalve the fork one of the things when we disable the pressure mechanism is you soon become aware of how much influence it has on the stroke and how much uh, force it's actually creating. So when we make this conversion, you have to dramatically bolster the damping uh, capability from this fork. So we're going to be revalving it and um, we're going to pay a lot of attention to the, the mid valve and the rebound in this particular fork. It does a lot more work than we'd like it to and the compression damping doesn't do enough. So we're going to we're going to basically reconfigure that and uh, get all the forces where we want them for the ultimate performance. 
Now, with our fork cap, there are these uh, aftermarket adjusters that you can buy for $19. They're, they're very, very inexpensive. And once you put these on, you'll never have a problem with your fork cap again. You can get them in orange or blue, depending upon whether you've got a KTM or a Husky. And so that, uh, that's quite economical. By the time you're finished here, you're probably looking at about $570 Australian. That's probably about $24 US. Um, but just kidding. Um, but uh, now we'll look at a more elegant solution. Okay, we looked at the economical solution. Now we're going to look at a more elegant solution. And this is from Del Soggio. Del Soggio are an Italian company, very, very passionate about uh, suspension performance and the engineering is exceptional and uh, uh, with this one you get a lot more for your money this this kit is um, seven hundred dollars or 695 and um, basically it comes with complete assemblies we have uh, a complete compression adjuster this is uh, got a little bit more tuning range and it has uh, its own valves already on there its own bottom out system the bottom out system is designed to be more effective comes with the pistons that go almost look like uh, cartridge bullets uh, goes on the end of the um, the damper rod and so that will manage the the bottoming a lot more effectively than the, the stock unit uh, in terms of the rebound they are, they're employing the standard rebound piston it's not a bad design but they give you both mid valve and rebound valving solutions for it now for the caps they actually supply their own adjuster, which is beautiful. Once again, it's very elegant. And so you can bolt those on. The, uh, all the instructions are, are managed via this QR code. So you simply scan it. You'll get all the instructions for the kit. It tells you exactly what valving is in there. And they have valving solutions for both pressurized and non-pressurized. Do yourself a favor, get rid of the pressurized system. It's very, very simple. Like I said, the O-ring, pop the seal out. I've, uh, I've already popped this seal out, it's only a tiny little thing that you can pop that out of the top of the cartridge. And very easy to see if you just take yours out and slide it over, very easy to see how that gap bridges the seal and uh, also easy to see how, um, how they can fail very, very easily as well. So for my money, I'd be going the Del Soggio. It's the best thing short of um, making a complete cartridge replacement or a complete fork replacement. If you wanted to go that way, you certainly could, um, and that's going to give you better performance again. But bang for buck, this thing's uh, pretty, pretty sweet. Okay, now you've got all that information, and you might be thinking, well, okay, I've never pulled these apart before. Are there any particular tools that I require? And there's one tool made by Racetech. Uh, Racetech, they're an American company, very, very innovative, and um, They've come up with a lot of suspension solutions over the years, particularly in tooling, and they've got valves, they've got springs, they've got the best springs. And, uh, and they're, they're one step ahead of their competition all the time. They're a much maligned company uh, and maligned by other tuners, not so much customers. The customers love their products, but uh, because they make, they make all the solutions so that customers can basically become DIY suspension tuners, uh, they're doing other tuners out of work and so they've, uh, they've copped a lot of bagging over the years basically because of uh, their business model but in terms of what they do for their customers they're, they're way on top you know so so uh, they've got a neat little product here and that particular uh, device that they've got it becomes your cap wrench it basically engages into these holes in the caps makes it very very easy to undo what is a difficult cap design to uh, to remove they uh, you can turn that tool over and it plugs in and it just has a little little 3 8 drive for your normal sockets and uh, you can undo the the base out of your fork and so that's primarily the main tool that we use for this particular fork a little seal pick will let you get that seal out and um, and good to go you know so very simple setup couple of little spanners but apart from that particular wonder tool you really don't need too much else okay guys that's all from us today at shock treatment so uh, that's the 4 CS fork a quick wrap up and um, we're going to be doing the explore fork next so stay tuned